Hi y'all, meteorologist Andy Hill here at the forecasting desk. A lot more of us here in the chaotic mid-latitudes of North America are being launched fully into spring pretty soon if we haven't been already, including multiple rounds of wild and wicked severe weather coming up. So let's talk about it. Another winter storm is ongoing along the Pacific coast right now. It's stalled out offshore such that it's streaming continuous rain and winds into the inland areas of California, as it has been doing Tuesday and will continue to do so through Thursday morning. Feet of snow have fallen in the coastal range and the Sierras again as a result, and winds are gusting heavily in many places in the west here. Storms and unsettled weather are possible through Wednesday night into Thursday morning in California, as I said. That low pressure system responsible is still offshore, so it is continuing to funnel in unstable conditions until it finally comes onshore. That theme then moves into the mountain time zones later today, Wednesday the 29th. Rain and mountain snow snow are going to be frequent here into Nevada, Utah, Western Colorado, Idaho, Wyoming, and Montana. So more often than not over the next week, y'all will really be getting cold, dreary, and boring days up here in the Pacific and mountain time zones. Just look at the expected temperatures from the Climate Prediction Center for about a week out from now. It's ridiculous how long this area of the West Coast has been plunged into below average temperatures over the past month. Hopefully, a pattern flip is on the way way for the latter half of April, because for most of y'all over here, it's been extended winter into March. And it doesn't look like for the first half of April, that's really going to change too much. Back to today, in the Great Lakes region through the northeast states and into southeastern Canada, starting this evening over here from much of southern to southeastern Ontario, as well as perhaps through the Detroit area in Michigan, and into Thursday morning for much of Quebec and northern New England, before getting out of your hair over here in into the day on Thursday. Now, the big time severe weather event. You may have seen starting a few days ago, the upcoming severe weather risks for Thursday, March 30th and Friday, March 31st from the Storm Prediction Center. I even talked about them during my last few live streams on this channel from last week. The latest is that Thursday has downtrended quite a bit from what was expected as all model solutions have converged on our low pressure system, stalling more to the west and thus not providing the instant stability and lift that we really need for these storms to get going. However, Friday the 31st is the main day. This is a day that for a lot of people to be weather aware. 46 million people here are in a slight risk or a 2 out of 5 in the yellow or greater in an enhanced area from the Storm Prediction Center on Friday. Strong storms capable of hail, damaging winds, and tornadoes are possible in this entire area here. And Saturday, April 1st continues our storm to the east, likely with a squall line moving through these areas toward the east coast very rapidly. At the same time, the northern edge and the back end of the storm will sport some heavy snow. We could see some particularly heavy stuff move through here Saturday morning in the Minnesota to Wisconsin area as well as the upper peninsula of Michigan, possibly even down into Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and into uh, portions of Iowa. But as this system exits on Saturday, it seems like it'll mostly be drenching us with liquid rain in this entire area encompassing New England and South Southeastern Canada. Beginning next week, our focus shifts to the Pacific Northwest for rain and storm systems that arrive on the coast up there before sweeping through the entire nation once again. Some years, the months of April and May have active severe weather risks of slight or greater from the Storm Prediction Center for nearly every day of the month. We get larger disturbances like these that sweep across the entire nation, but we also sometimes get smaller or more subtle storms that can be just upsetting enough to the atmosphere in a local area to cause severe weather. Let's talk about all of this more in depth so that you're in the know. As I said, thankfully, it seems like Thursday's risk has toned down quite a bit from the Storm Prediction Center. Previously for Thursday, Dallas-Fort Worth, Oklahoma City, and even up to Kansas City could have been deep topics to discuss for severe weather on this day. But the trough in question has generally stuck further to the west, stalling off the Pacific coast near California. And thus, it is no longer supporting numerous storms in these regions, so we've seen a downgrade to a marginal risk that, uh, that encompasses most of those areas talked about. That marginal threat still exists, though, and storms are definitely possible, but in these areas, they should be 
considerably less widespread. They should be much more isolated in nature. Not to be discounted, though, is the response, the mass response at the surface. Thursday afternoon is when we see the beginning of cyclogenesis, or the formation of our weather maker, the low pressure system over the high plains here. When this happens, we will see strong winds engulf much of the southern high plains, and dry air coexisting with the acceleration of these winds will lead to a prolonged fire threat for eastern New Mexico into the Texas Panhandle. Here's a look at that fire weather risk starting up for eastern New Mexico, southeastern Colorado, and the Texas Panhandle on Thursday. And then we see that fire weather risk basically stay in the same spot here on Friday and Saturday and even showing up once again next week. We'll talk about that one soon here. Now this Friday, because we have nearly 50 million people in at least a slight risk category from the Storm Prediction Center, let's dive into some conventional severe weather forecasting to help you have a better understanding of what's going on. Tornadoes, hail, and damaging winds are all going to be possible for that incredible amount of people in the path of these storms on Friday. So I imagine a lot of you might want a more in-depth breakdown of the severe weather ingredients to help alleviate some storm anxiety or help you understand maybe where some of these severe weather ingredients are sourced from. One of the best ways to handle that storm anxiety is to break it down. So let's do it. For severe weather, we need air that's swampy enough. We need winds blowing storms in the right direction, and we need air to be forced upward to create and sustain big ol' cumulonimbus thunderclouds. On Friday, we can see this area of blue moving northward and reaching into Iowa, Illinois, Missouri, and all along the Ohio River Valley here. This blue is our dew point, or a measure of how much water is in the air. Particularly this map, we're looking at the surface. The blue here is a 60 degree Fahrenheit, or greater dew point temperature, which is a hallmark for severe weather. It means enough moisture is in in place to create thunderstorms, and this time it's in place here on Friday. Moisture, chat. Next up, we have the wind direction that storms are generally going to travel in. In this case, on Friday afternoon into the evening, they're moving northeast here, as denoted by the arrows in yellow. The cold front is back in here, moving this direction. If a supercell forms, which many probably will on Friday, then it needs to stay away from the cold front, otherwise it's going to be caught up in the line of storms here. And when it does get caught up in that line of storms, it will transition into the line of storms instead of remaining a discrete supercell, which usually are what we look for in terms of storms being capable of all severe hazards. So we see in our risk area here that mostly storms are moving away from the cold front quite a good way. So that means that there could be supercells persisting for a while, but eventually they'll be overtaken by this cold front moving in. And as that cold front overtakes the cells, they will likely intensify the band of storms moving along with that front as they merge together. That's all to say, together, that there will be multiple types of storms moving through on Friday in that giant risk area. So, multiple types of storms? Chat. Finally, we need forcing. What's going to keep these storms going up instead of deflating and falling apart? This one's a bit complicated. We need something called divergence. It's when we get a lot of air. The jet stream blowing really fast and then it whooshes out in different directions. So here's our jet stream core right about in here on Friday afternoon. The whooshing out that I said is taking a place roughly like this. Winds here are going this direction, winds here are going up in this direction, and winds down here are going this direction. So you can see how they kind of diverge from that core in the yellow there. That whooshing out creates a void above our heads, usually about two to six miles above the surface. And that void is something the atmosphere must fill. In order to do that, it takes air from the surface and moves it up. Thus, we get rising air. Check. Moist air, storms moving with the cold front, rising air. That's what every meteorologist is trained to recognize on severe weather days like this Friday. And we have all of the above in spades coming up. Also, for those wondering about a timeline on Friday, I want to show you the instability here. You can see that this is a really narrow layer of uh, instability here, which is what is fueling the storms as we go through the day on Friday into Friday night and early Saturday morning across much of the Midwest and the Mississippi River Valley and the lower Ohio River Valley. Because this area of instability is so slim east to west,
west. These storms should be in and out of your area. You only have a couple hour stretch here where the worst of it is impacting you. So hopefully this shouldn't be an all day thing for those up near Chicago or Des Moines or Davenport in Iowa or even St. Louis, Missouri. However, down south in Mississippi, you can see there's a little bit of a pocket of instability down here that's showing up out ahead of the cold front there. So we could see a time where we get multiple rounds of severe weather down there instead of just one strong storm while the cold front passes through or any isolated supercells in the vicinity up in the north. We're a little far out, but hopefully that helps narrow down the timing for these storms to pass through, you know, in terms of what to expect, whether it's going to last all day or not. So as a result of all of those basic principles, I expect Friday to be a pretty active severe weather day. And given we have such a large area of the enhanced three out of five risk here from the Storm Prediction Center, it's very likely that some of these areas inside of this could be upgraded to a higher risk, indicating a more of a certainty of severe weather that will be ongoing. Another springtime nationwide storm will be ongoing mid next week, sweeping through the nation there. And it's similar to the one that went through this Friday and also the one that produced our tornado outbreak in Mississippi last Friday. So the Storm Prediction Center has already highlighted a day seven outlook for next Tuesday, April 4th, in which another powerful cold front will sweep through the nation just like it has been doing, just like we've been seeing. And that will actually include much of the same areas that we've seen impacted this week, of course. After April 4th to April 5th, the Climate Prediction Center actually highlights another area of a high risk of heavy precipitation and flooding for April 6th to April 8th. And this includes much of the lower Mississippi River Valley here in green. This is because the cold fronts that carry the cold air behind them from these nationwide sweeper storms can actually stall out, become stationary, and even turn back into warm fronts surging northward with warm air once again into the same areas that were just swept through. And while the front changes types from cold to stationary to warm, the entire time it's serving as a boundary for storms to pop up on or just even heavy rain in general. So that's why we see even this far out a high confidence in heavy rainfall once again for these areas that have already received anywhere from 6 to 10 inches of rain over the past week. The grounds are saturated, a lot of tributaries have flooded in some capacity, so a high risk for heavy rainfall once again into the later part of next week is not something that we want to see over here. So everything is seemingly flood prone. This next storm should swing in more from the northwest U.S. up here, meaning rain and snow for Oregon and Washington, depending on the elevation, rather than for most of California. That unsettled weather will be for this upcoming weekend to start off y'all's April. Then, into the start of the week, it'll migrate down into Idaho, Utah, Montana, Wyoming, and western Colorado before intensifying over the plains and sweeping across the states again Tuesday through Thursday next week. So for this week, Friday, March 31st, it's already looking like it's going to be a major live stream candidate here on YouTube for my channel and for Ryan's channel. I streamed the last two severe weather outbreaks on my channel here from this past week, and it was incredible to be able to express my side of the operation here on the y'all team and be genuine with everyone watching. I tried to include as many people as possible too. It was stressful, but I think I did a pretty good job at reaching a lot of people. So as a result, you can almost surely catch me on Friday covering this system coming up. And again, I'll be trying to include as many people as possible considering we have 45 to 50 million people possibly under a slight risk or greater on that day. Ryan is probably going to be back just in time from recovery efforts in Mississippi as well. So even if he is or isn't live streaming this event at the same time as myself, I will be here on YouTube covering it because more than likely we're going to see this category of risk maintained if not increased as we get closer to the day. Up. I really think that these live streams are some of the most helpful things for covering severe weather. They will be a frequent thing throughout the spring. However, I will be going storm chasing in Oklahoma and areas surrounding that into this coming May from mid to late into the month. So for a two week period, I will probably be out and about. It's going to be harder for me to make videos, but I'll still try my best to upload here and there. And of course, hopefully I'll get as much uh, storm chasing footage as possible to share with y'all. So hopefully this video helped you out. Stay weather aware, y'all, and I'll see you soon.